So it goes without saying that Anthony Pompiano is the king of Bitcoin hyperbole. But sometimes he says things that really leave me thinking. I still reference his Medium article, the SEC will mandate security tokens as one of the seminal pieces on security tokens and their role in modernizing the private equity market. Seriously, give it a read. It's really good. So suffice to say, I believe he made another proclamation worth exploring in an article and CNBC interview entitled, The U.S. Should Tokenize the Dollar Immediately. So let's dig into his core thesis and conclusion and really ask that question. Should the U.S. dollar be tokenized? Welcome to Ready, Set, Crypto. This is your brain on blockchain. <laughs> So before we get going, I want to make sure that you're aware that we have a free newsletter, which gives you daily updates about what's going on in the crypto space over at rscnewsletter.com. And if you're more interested in learning how to trade and joining a community to help you learn that, we've got awesome courses as part of our Omnia service, such as how to trade margin or options over at readysetcrypto.com. Now, this is what Pompliano had to say regarding why the US should tokenize the dollar. The United States can't become the most effective military in the cyber world unless it's willing to completely decentralize its networks and currency ownership. However, the country can become more transparent and more globally adopted. Transparency will be the hardest idea to sell to government leadership because true transparency is not selective. It will give insight into what the Federal Reserve is doing, what politicians are paying who, and the general flow of funds throughout the market. But the one aspect of this argument that most people will agree upon is adoption. If someone can more easily get access to the Chinese Yuan compared to the US dollar, then the US dollar will be at a disadvantage. There won't be a competition between digital and non-digital currencies in the future. Every currency will be digitized. The true competition is going to come at the monetary policy level. The United States has a head start here, so tokenizing the dollar would likely provide more cushion from disruption. But even that action will ultimately be futile in my opinion. People are going to choose to store their wealth in Bitcoin. So needless to say, this is highly interesting due to the radical implications at stake here. First, we should address that while it's true that China is creating a digital currency, they have no set timeline in place. Despite the optimistic article here and there, I don't think they're ready for a radical rollout anytime soon. Instead, I consider their efforts and the news thereof to be a hedge against further trade war escalation. It's the same thing we saw when Huawei was banned in the US from receiving Android updates in relation to the trade war. Although there is allegations of spying, Huawei's response was to roll out their own mobile OS, something that they've been developing on the back end for five years. It should also be noted that China is much better suited for a digital currency rollout, given their rapid transformation towards digital payments in the recent years. This puts them well ahead of many other developed countries, especially the US, in terms of possible adoption. So the second point here is to note that there's some confusion as to what constitutes digitization versus tokenization. It's true that digital fiat is certainly widespread in both China and the US between WeChat, Alipay, Venmo, and PayPal. And with many other banking services, digital fiat is already a major part of people's lives. So instead, when talking about tokenized fiat, this is what Jeremy Allaire, the CEO behind Circle, characterized it by. Allaire believes that the world is heading towards a system of cheap, instant monetary transactions with traditional fiat money, regardless of which countries happen to launch digital fiat money. Moreover, he thinks that this will be a radical change in the way that payment systems, the monetary system and economic interactions at large, will work. Allaire explained that he does not think that digital currencies will simply be tokenized via blockchain, but otherwise operate in the same way that they do now. Instead, he predicts that global money tokens, backed by baskets of reserve currencies, will emerge and become the preferred monetary model. But let's center this around the US dollar tokenized fiat. A government distributed coin could create wealth for America by leveraging America as a dominant player in the cryptocurrency game. Or so goes the theory proposed by Silicon Valley investor and OpenAI co-chairman Sam Altman. He said, I think the first superpower government to do something like this will have an enviable position in the future of the world and some power over a worldwide currency. The US government could decide to treat USDCT as a second legal currency, which would be hugely powerful. USDCT could require that certain transactions only happen with wallets of known users having a built-in KYC, and it could even build a tax system into the protocol. 
A tricky part of this would be how to balance letting the network have control over itself and letting the government have special degree over the input on monetary policy. It's certainly okay for the government to have some, but I think the network needs to be mostly in charge of itself. You know, for example, to prevent the government from arbitrarily inflating the currency when it wanted to. And I know, the current practice seems to be around governments mostly ignoring cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency enthusiasts mostly ignoring government. But I think that's unsustainable in both directions. I believe there exists a middle ground where the government can get a lot of the efficiencies it wants and cryptocurrency users can get the adoption and recognition that they want too. Certainly with more regulations likely to appear over cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology down the road anyway, getting the government involved is a mutually beneficial arrangement and is far better than regulating decentralized currencies into irrelevance. Creating a virtual currency and embracing crypto wallets could be a good move for America on a practical level too. The Federal Reserve allocated nearly a billion dollars to create paper money in 2018, and that doesn't even account for how much it costs to create coins, or the money lost because of or spent enforcing actions against counterfeit dollars and coins. But there's still a few caches here. One in four Americans still don't have smartphones, according to the Pew Research Center, and only 70% of Americans have access to broadband. It's unlikely that a national cryptocurrency would be able to take off until everyone has cheap and reliable access to both. And you know, these problems and others don't mean that a nationally endorsed cryptocurrency could never work. Down the road, it might be a valuable and worthwhile investment for the federal government. But right now, there are too many hurdles in the way of anything like it helping anyone but the people who already have the expertise and capital to invest. Still, the idea is very compelling and could be where we see the ideas of cryptocurrency and blockchain start to really blossom. Needless to say, the future will be represented by a synthesis of centralization and decentralization. And ideas like tokenizing the US dollar, while imperfect right now, need to be at the forefront of our ongoing discussion about economic policy and economic innovation. So what do you think? Should the US tokenize the US dollar? What role should the Fed play in all this? Do you see this ever taking off or being a possibility? Let's discuss in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoy the content, please give us a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.